Melinda Van Fleet is a business and relationship growth consultant who helps her clients grow their business through a combination of empowering them to use their intuition along with energetics and strategy. Melinda and her husband, Captain Ryan of Good Karma Sport Fishing and Coaching, moved to the Florida Keys in 2009 after they were both laid off at the same time. When they were starting over from scratch, she would say, someday we will have our shit together. And when we do, we'll help others. Melinda now helping others on her 3.5 life. She has an unparalleled story of dreaming big, taking action, and a lot of hard work. Let's find out what makes Melinda so buzzworthy. Welcome to the show, Melinda. How are you today? I'm awesome, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. So where are you calling in from today? The Florida Keys. My That's husband right. and I live in Key Largo, Florida for almost 15 years now. Wow. Key Largo. There's a song, an old Beach Boy song, right? Yes, I remember. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met anybody that's actually lived in Key Largo, which is heard in the song. So yeah. That's amazing. You don't want me to sing, so don't go there. <laughs> so... Um, as I was mentioning in your intro, you and your husband, you, you kind of got in, you almost pushed into your business um, after being both you and your husband being laid off. Um, and that was, you said about 15, 20 years ago? Yeah, 2009. So 15 years ago. Oh, this so this is right after the 2008 quest. Yeah, kind of when, so we're in 2024, so 2009. Mm -hmm. So right now was actually when we were in the crux of selling everything and packing up to start the journey down here. Oh, so. wow. Well, now, what made you pick Florida Keys? Yeah. So my husband had this dream to be a sport fishing captain. And mm. I would say we want to move somewhere where it never, ever snowed. <laughs> so when it came time to actually like do the thing, because we were up against a wall of like, we might as well. And my mom had said, why don't you guys just move to Florida? And my best friend said, why don't you guys just move to Key West? You're both hard workers. You'll figure it out. We were kind of like, well, let's just do that. <laughs> so, awesome. so the Florida Keys is actually the sport fishing capital of the world. Oh, wow. So, so he, he definitely found himself at home there. But then I'm hearing this and coaching. So help the listeners understand this whole sports fishing, sports, sports fisherman. I can talk today and coaching. How did that come about? Yes. So when we, as, as you said in the intro, when we were um, starting over and figuring things out as entrepreneurs, you know, my husband and I were both in W2s before, worked in the corporate world, both of us, we realized that, you know, someday we were like, this has been a really painful, hard process. And we've had a lot of lessons <laughs> and the best teachers are really the people that have been through the mud. They are the ones that have lived the thing. Mm -hmm. They have um, a lot to teach and a lot to share. Mm -hmm. So that was just always our vision. And then when my husband started the charters in 2012, in January 2012 was when we officially started Good Karma Sport Fishing. He quickly realized that he's just a natural teacher. He runs his charters like a teaching experience. Mm. So for anyone out there, if you've ever been a sport fishing charter, and Michael, I know you're very aware of <laughs> fishing and charters and things like that. You know, a lot of captains kind of, um, at least down here, sit in the tower and, and they don't really talk to many people. They're kind of doing their thing and the mates are there. But our, our business is different where my husband it runs the charter by himself. We don't mm. have any mates. Mm -hmm. So he actually teaches as he fishes mm -hmm. and it was just a natural um, progression between our vision of what we said it, since 2009 of helping other people and the fact that he's just a natural teacher. Mm -hmm. And then with our business backgrounds and then me then going into coaching, consulting and mentoring myself, it just kind of all was like the perfect storm and, and came together. So we, be, we um, created the, the DBA, you know, Good Karma Sport Fishing and Coaching, and that's what we go by now. And so now are, are you 
on the boat coaching and mentoring or do you have another arm of this of this company yes so it's twofold great question i'm actually someone who doesn't like to fish that much (laughs) so (laughs) i can i can but it's not my thing right so i do all the behind the scenes work um as a, a business partner a lot of um, things that people probably don't think about or know, especially if you're not an entrepreneur. And then I also have my own coaching practice where I predominantly spend a lot of time with women 50 plus mm-hmm. who are in more of a business transition part of their life and their journey because I've obviously done that. So again, the best coaches and mentors and teachers are people that have walked the walk before you. So I, I kind of do both things. I help him structure all the courses mm-hmm. and all the behind the scenes things, the marketing, um, all the things we have to do with the financials and the grids and all the clients. And it's a lot. And then I have my things as well. So I love that. And so we have the corporate refugees t- teaching the new corporate refugees, like how to make that transition. Now, you have uh, you you would you'd mentioned a mentor, coach, and consultant. So, mm-hmm. is this a a schizophrenic um, uh, type of, of role, or is it something that you progress through with clients, or is it how does that work? Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you asked. I was hoping you would ask because I feel a lot of people don't really know or understand the difference between the different channels. Mm -hmm. So a coach is someone who asks you questions. So if you really understand what coaching is, and I'm a certified life coach, so a lot of coaches aren't there, aren't certified, so they didn't really go through the the channels, let's say. Mm -hmm. A, A true coach is someone who like asks questions in this lane, in like life coaching. Mm -hmm. A mentor is someone who went before you. So they're truly just kind of sharing their advice Mm -hmm. um, along the way. They're not trying to pull it out of you and have you come to your own conclusion. They're more giving their advice, their expertise. Mm -hmm. And a consultant is someone who typically has like a roadmap or a strategy, whether it's um, something they built and they fit your business into the box Mm -hmm. or Perhaps they know how to build something for your business specifically that, you know, is a little more tailored. So because I have experience in all three things and I've also worked with all three types of um, people over the years, many times in many different facets, Mm -hmm. I feel that I'm a really good hybrid of all of those um, types of ways to work with people. So what do you feel for women in, like you were saying, 55 plus, what is the biggest adjustment that you've seen coming from the corporate world into the entrepreneurial realm? Mm -hmm. I would say finding your place. Mm. So figuring out like, what is it that I love to do? And there's also a lot of belief system work around that, whether it's fear, self-love, confidence, finding your voice. Mm. And, you know, then you have the aspect of fitting that into your life. <laughs> you know, how does that fit into your life? Do you have kids? You know, um, your, your, your other relationships, whether you're married or you're single, and really just sticking with it. And in this crazy, busy online world, as I'm sure you would agree, with (laughs) lots of distractions and Mm. shiny objects and people telling you that you're just going to make a million dollars overnight, it can be a really tough road if you don't have proper mentorship. Uh, I agree. So really, really being able to hold the space for someone on that journey is really important. And then being able to see their patterns and help them move through different um, blocks, different fear, things from the past. You know, a friend of mine said to me um, a couple years ago, someone that I went to college with, who's a very successful um, business person in her own right. And she said, Melinda, what do you think it is? Do you think it's like age is, is wisdom? Do you agree with that? 
And I said, well, actually, I think the older we get, the more unwiring we have to do. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. all the things, right? Mm -hmm. Like our jobs and our lives and again, social media and, and all the stuff out there. So um, those are just a few examples of some things that I help uh, women through as they're thinking about, you know, how do I transition out of this corporate job? I'm tired of it. I have a toxic work culture, or um, maybe they're just excited to try something new in their life and live their live a passion or a goal. Now, my dad, uh, he retired. He's very, actually, he retired early too. I want to say he was in his sixties, uh, early sixties. So it was like before the social security and all of this stuff said that they, that he would, but he worked for uh, Kaiser Permanente. And uh, so he had an option to, to get out early and all that good stuff. And then he wanted to become a teacher uh, as well, a coach. And I found that he, he didn't realize how much work it was. Mm. And within a year, he decided, no, nah. <laughs> he was going to. How often do you uh, encounter people who are like super excited about doing something different in their life? They've always thought they were an entrepreneur, but then they go into entrepreneurship and they realize, holy cow, this is 10 times more work than my job ever was. A lot. <laughs> and how do you, now how do you handle that? Are, are you the one that then, then, then helps them transition to the other side of what they were thinking? And like, maybe you should just take a break. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a, a few ways to look at it. And it is, I think, really important and such a great question that people are aware of that. So knowing, you know, if you are going to leave your job that probably had a lot of security, let's say, and insurance and things like that, have you built up a couple years for okay. that transition to take place? Right. And yeah. I know for me personally, you know, we had um, done a lot of this work, not even strategically, to be really honest, it just kind of landed this way. Mm -hmm. But I started in sales, the money that the extra money I made from sales went to fund the sport fishing business. Mm. And then we realized, actually, I realized that my husband had a major block, a money block. Mm. And it was based on kind of something we were saying back and forth, like a totally weird thing. Mm. And once we re I saw this. I was like, oh my gosh, we have this weird money block that we keep doing. Mm -hmm. And we released the money block. His business then took off shortly after. And then I had a horrible thing happen in my sales business, which is actually really typical hmm. that um, when your sales business gets so large that the company cuts it in half. <laughs> so and hires another rep. And then you have to work just as hard to get the money back. Oh. I it's like a typical, I've heard it for years and then it happened to me. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so a lot of salespeople, I'm sure if they're listening are like, yeah, I had that happen before. So uh, they just so took your, your book of sales and gave it to somebody else? Half. They cut you in half. And they, and they, and they don't it. compensate you for that? No, nope, because you're 100% commission. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. So that, common. If you're that would really be the first and last time that somebody did that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's when I started my exit plan. So right. to your point, that's when I had, I have it written on a piece of paper. It's actually by my desk. I'm in my husband's fishing room right now, which is why the screen is blurred. But yeah, I wrote, it was um, March 17th, 2017. And I said, what is next? Because mm. that was the day I got the phone call from the company that said, oh, you're so amazing. We're cutting your territory in half and we know you can do it. And I was like, Mm -mm. So, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. They want to make more money, so they cut you because yeah. you're going to work hard to get that money back, and uh, or at least a good percentage, which I did. I I didn't get it all back to two million, but I got it to like one million and a half, mm -hmm. and um, and selling like candles and jewelry, little things. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah that's so tough work. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money in candles. That's a lot of candles. Yes. It's a lot of candles. <laughs> so what do you feel is your, when, when, when they know, they know, right? Like, you know, you're an entrepreneur when you've tried it out. And it's so funny when you're talking about, you know, corporate refugee um, situations where 
You have people who've worked. I mean, a lot of folks, when they're in the corporate world, they're used to working the, the 50, 60 hour work week. Right. And, and, and so, and then they hear these adages of like, you know, entrepreneurs complain about working the 60 hour work week or 80 hour work week. You're like, I work 60 hour work week. It's, it's nothing, right? Dot, dot, dot. But then you go in there and you realize that it's not just working the 60 to 80 hours. It's also all the energy after you are mm-hmm. not technically working that consumes you, right? So my, my wife's in education and she, she just took her first private um, uh, private sector job, um, here in Virginia. And she is, so she's always worked for the government and she's like, wow, like I worked a lot in, in the government. She, she always went above and beyond, but now it's like in the, in the private sector, there's absolutely no boundaries in like, Hey, we got to get all this stuff done. Cause we just got to get it done. Right. And there's only so many people, but then as an entrepreneur, you're the only one to get it done. Yes. How how do you help people make that transition of you're not working for a salary anymore? You're only working for, you know, eating what you kill, if you, if you will. Yeah, yeah. It's really understanding where to focus mm. and what needs to go. Mm. And there's a lot of narrative online and I'm not saying this is wrong, but I've also worked with people who've gotten themselves kind of in trouble over this where they're like thinking they need to hire everything out and you might not be at a place to do that. And I think there's a whole other topic associated with that. So for this conversation, I think it's just really important for people to go, okay, you're going to have to really understand that like scrolling on the phone is like, eh, eh, eh unless you're like doing research for your niche or whatever you're trying to do or build, um, you're going to have to just make sacrifices and you're going to have to be very disciplined in that. And then very focused on at least having like a, your path of what you're trying to achieve, like really dialed in. And, um, again, the best teachers are the ones that went before you and made lots of mistakes. And in those mistakes, you know, I definitely had the whole, you know, shiny object, what, you know, oh, I'll just do a little bit here and a little bit here. And I am actually very disciplined, which I am, but I was still a little too all over the board. So um, I think that that's really important. And it's really important to understand that. And, and know that um, if you want to move faster, you know, everything goes at your own pace and your own timing. So if you think you have, you know, 20 years to build a business, well, sure, you know, <laughs> scroll away. <Yeah. laughs> that's, that's on you. But um, if you hire a coach who, to help keep you focused, like that would be something I, w- I would say. It's just really understanding your time management and discipline skills and what you can edit from your life. Yeah. <laughs>